Hi, I'm back with Dave Oshana with questions about the Enlightenment transmission. Um, Dave, can we forget what we've learned or is there a portion of what we've learned and what we've experienced in our time with you that is persistent? That's another trick question. Uh, what you've learned is simply what you've uncovered. And what you've uncovered was always there, it was always known to you. And so you can't really lose it, but you could, it could leave your conscious awareness. The real active question though is, is it still working in you? As I was talking about the energy work before, it was working in me after enlightenment, so I didn't have to move myself around. So it's not, do I remember the techniques? Do I remember the moves? Do I know how to relate to people? The question is, is it happening for you by itself? If it's happening by itself, there's nothing to remember up here, nothing whatsoever. This is why I'm kind of like, although I talk a lot and I teach a lot and I give a lot of advice if people ask questions, for me, I walk away and I remember nothing of what I've said. And I also say to other people, you don't have to remember this, you don't have to take notes, you don't have to record and analyze and, and try to put it into some structure. What we're aiming for is for the body to come alive and for its remembrance to come back. We're not looking for information. Information often makes a person too heady and disconnect from their body. We don't want that. So knowledge won't open the body. But the experience of opening the body opens the body. The knowledge that's left in the head won't make a difference, but knowledge in the body will have a... But it's knowledge in the body that will make the difference. And does that persist? Uh, not necessarily. Um, you know, people, people forget things all the time. They go back to bad habits. Uh, it's not guaranteed. It, it's when the thing is so delicious and overwhelming that's why they continue something. That's, in any healthy practice, people are either doing it because it's really delicious or you know, they're trying to overcome some pain and the practice helps them somehow. But, but really, it should be pleasure that leads a person and not avoidance of pain. Switching gears on you a little bit here. Um, many seekers that I come into contact with seem to have uh, and a desire, and I have this too, I think, this desire to experience some otherness other than how it is right now. That if I can access this otherness, that everything's going to be magical and wonderful. And, but that's not at all what you're talking about. Is no. It? It's thisness, not otherness. This, and it's entering fully into this, feeling every cell in your body, feeling if you've got emotions, well, you've got emotions, feeling all of them, rich, detailed, steamy, fiery, cold, stagnant, heavy. First, the first thing is full awareness. That's the first thing that I always teach. Full awareness. Without awareness, you can't even know anything anyway. You have, you have to have your, all your senses open. Uh, why share any of this? Why share any of this? Uh, the first reason why I was sharing it was because I thought I had to put the record straight because I said that enlightenment doesn't exist for two and a half years and then when I got enlightened I thought I'd be misleading people even though they don't have to listen to me I was just a seeker but once I found it existed I thought I should say it does exist and also I should say it's not as hard as you think it is to get it another thing that was that um, Let's say, for example, you've got really good flowers and they brighten up everywhere and they have a great smell. But everywhere else around you is kind of lacking and it's sad and, and it's not really working. Then what you have, you want to share with other people. You want to have flowers everywhere, just like you've got pumpkins all over here, you know? So, also I want you to know what had happened to me. I didn't know what had happened to me when I got enlightened and, and by having other people have the experience, describe the experience in their own words, uh, tell me what they're experiencing around me. I know more about what happened to me and what is happening around me. I, I'm, I'm fascinated by it still today. As much as I was nearly 20 years ago, I'm fascinated every single day by this. I'm, I'm entertained by it as well. Last question, Dave. 
Uh, you've talked a little bit about some of the experiences that folks have had on your intensives, on your retreats, and one-to-ones, and the folks that you've come into contact with. And you've talked a little bit about sometimes that you <clears throat> will calibrate the transmission. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that means and, and what that is and how you decide to what to calibrate and when? So that's like the proximity question because the enlightenment transmission is never held back. But uh, when I'm doing something with someone, then it's like, a, it's like a parabola dish that causes a laser pinpoint focus of all of those things. And it causes that person to open up more, to feel more, and to receive more, and to be less guarded and defended. So what the calibration is, is me actually either being really careful not to overwhelm that person, allowing their defenses to be there, not to pop all their circuitry so they can see lots of things. So that's the calibration. It's actually making sure actually the person doesn't get too much of an impact. So making sure they're not too open. Or if they can take it, then just letting it open up and open up and open up and then whoosh, they get more percentage of the environment transmission coming in. So what are the signs that somebody gives off allow you to know how to calibrate? Uh, well, a person that can't handle very much is tense, um, but not necessarily. I mean, they, I'm looking at, I'm looking at a, collect, a constellation of characteristics and then I have to weigh it. But if a person is tense, uh, if, they, um, if they're embarrassed in public, uh, so I can't work with them in a group setting, but I could maybe work with them in a one-to-one -one setting, uh, if a person takes things too personally, it's hard to discuss things. If they're doing something and they take it really personally or they get offended. Um, uh, uh, if a person's lifestyle or family situation or work situation, they don't really want to change it, but they clearly do. They're really in pain about it, but I don't want to make them, it, it too obvious to them how much pain they're, and suffering they're really in because they're just going to go more into turmoil. They, they're going to hit their crunch point or crashing point faster than they really can. And I'm reconsidering that, but I've been about speeding it up for them, but I've been cautious for so many years because I know what the effects can be if people awaken too fast. I've met people who tell me that it happened to them. They've turned to alcoholism. Um, they've turned themselves over uh, to medical services. That people around them have got really freaked out, they've left uh, stable situations because they weren't able to handle it. So, so I'm cautious, I don't want people to fall apart. But also I don't want them to miss their opportunity, so it's a real juggling act. Well Dave, I'm afraid the sun is setting on our time together. Um, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to answer these questions with us and I look forward to doing this again sometime. And all of this really happened because of the people that want this. You know, it's, it's because of them that we're sitting here on the beach having this conversation, as well as all of the experiences that have happened here. And I really appreciate, I really appreciate those people for being brave, for turning up, for being courageous, for opening themselves up, and for following their drive and their passion. I mean, it was them that brought them here. It wasn't us. We're just two guys on the beach. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been great. It's been great. Thanks again.